All right, what's shaking, everybody? It is uh, Thursday, January 27th. Unfortunately, no Thursday night football, but what we do have is some mail. And while I was um, going through my list of, hey, here's what's coming in, you know, I do it old school. If, if I buy something on eBay, I, when, it, when it comes in the mail, <laughs> I'll write it down on a list. And I'm working towards creating a spreadsheet for that. I know it'd be a lot uh, simpler if I did that. Maybe, maybe I can figure out a way to automate it. I don't, I don't know. I'm working towards that point. Uh, but anyway, I like to write it down so then I know what I got. I know what I paid for it. And just to have any other uh, useful notes. So here came a PWE and what we've got here. And that's pretty cool. You know, I see that move. You know, hey, hey, thanks, M. Yeah. Hey, man, that's all right. You know, I dig it. Got an old school Steve Bartkowski right there also too. But what this one is, is it is a 2005 Topps Finest work done. You know, and part of that in 170, it's kind of short print. Part of it was just a really inexpensive pickup under $3. Uh, work done. Great dude. You know, if you hear about what he did for single mothers in his hometown of New Orleans, you can't help but like him. And so that was one thing while watching the playoffs last week. I was like, man, hey, I'm... <laughs> I think I'm going to start chasing down some of these good dudes and make a collection of good dudes. Maybe we'll call it the good dude collection. I don't know. And then here's another one that I got in. It came in in a big, you know, six by 10 level mailer. Hey, guess what? We'll reuse that for sure. Here's what they sent. Um, kind of weird tape there, man. I've never seen that tape. It kind of looks like a shit man kind of kind of looks like surgical tape of some kind but one thing you know like i know a lot of sellers and sometimes i'll do it you know like you match up your cardboard to the size of the cards and just a little bit oversized when you get too much oversized man i found out that those cards might slip around and i don't I'd like to try to prevent it. You know, if squeezing the cardboard together and then taping can lock those cards in place, it's just something that I I try to think about whenever I'm unboxing these up. Because the thing I don't want to have happen is the have the sons of bitches slide into the goddamn tape right there. I mean, that's what I want to avoid. You know, I don't. I want if I'm sending cards to somebody, I want them to be you know arrive how better than better than I sent them if that's possible. But sometimes you know. It's just people, they're trying to do the right thing too, man. I don't think anybody's maliciously out there over taping a bunch of shit. You know, I think everybody's just kind of wanting to try to do their best to do the right thing. Uh, you know you know what I mean? So maybe that that card right there, and this was a lot of uh, 2008, uh, uh, you know, like in order to get this tape off of there, I mean, Yikes, that might have to be in the keeper pile right there by default. You know, you buy you, you buy some cards and invariably, you know, some of them, hey man, they're just not gonna, <laughs> they're not gonna make muster and we're not gonna be able to list them. And that, you know what, that's, that's fine. I'm not gonna get too beat up about it, wrapped up, wound up about it, man. You know, I think, you know, if the guy sends a bubble mailer and the cards are taped and cardboarded, man, he's trying. He's trying to do what he thinks is best. So, yeah, 2008 Upper Deck SP Authentic. Probably bought these at the worst time possible, right before Aaron Rodgers was exited out of the playoffs by the San Francisco 49ers last Saturday night. But, hey, that is what it is. Uh, the thing I, I kind of thought about was, hey, man, I don't have enough of this guy, either as a collection or as uh inventory in the store to generate sales so i knew if i could get an inexpensive multiplayer lot i could i could anchor that up if nothing else and you know who knows man maybe get one to keep but lo and behold man the uh you know really what <laughs> i'm filming this for the moment we've all been waiting for is the grail card and i know Everybody out there, if you've collected for any amount of time, regardless of what sport or what type of card you collect, there's going to be a grail card. That's the card that you want the most or the, your most desired card. And, you know, it can, you know, for every different person, you know, they're kind of like opinions, opinions and a-holes. Everybody's grail card is going to be a little bit different. And I just wanted to take this, this short amount of time to share with you my grail card. Um... And, you know, 
it, it is what it is. I mean, this is, you won't believe it when you see it. You'll be like, man, really? <laughs> the guy would call that a grill card. But I'll break it down as to why. And without further ado, in my hands right now, a 1979 Topps Earl Campbell number 390 rookie card in a CSG4. Hey, here's the thing, man. $13.50 for a slabbed or Earl Campbell rookie card. And it's not a desirable grade. It's not really even a desirable grading company at this point. But what it is, is it's a slabbed Earl Campbell card. And this was my most desired card as a kid, even as an adult. And at the same time that I was buying the good guy collection and then, hey, man, let me see what we can do with the, you know, the weekly guest, uh, the, the, the McAfee show. Why not buy an Earl Campbell? So I did, man. And, you know, back in the early 70s. So there's a big spot, right? But back in the late 70s, back in 79, 80, this card was hard to find, you know, and ripping wax packs, you just weren't able to to come across an Earl Campbell. And at the time, the guy was easily the most dominant running back that we had seen on TV for the past two years, with the exception of, you know, Walter Payton and Tony Dorsett. So I couldn't find this card, and I kept copies of this card. I had two or three of them, and over the years, I've given them away, and or, I've, you know, I've, I've never really sold it. I think I've still got one or two. And, but I didn't know what kind of condition they'd be in, and so I thought, man, if I got a four... I would be able to just really evaluate and it looks like the, these corners are corners are beat up and you know it is what it is man it's just a neural campbell in a slab what i can do is i can take the grade master to it and you know check it out and see why maybe it be, you know came in as a as a four very good ex a lot of good things about this you know dude is a hall of famer um you know, it's it's sla it's slab. It's going to hold a raw card value uh, at, at at a minimum, and it it it'll give us a good opportunity to experiment with cost averaging on slab cards. But nonetheless, man, I can't believe I finally got one. Here's the uh, and here's another thing. Like, man, I remember being eight, thinking, man, I can't wait to go have some skull. You know, Earl is affiliated with a chewing tobacco firm. Just a pinch between your cheek and gum. So yeah, this, going back to like what makes this card kind of so special to me anyways, you know, like, so it was available in 1979 as number 390. And then of course you can also get the record breakers. And I do have a few copies of those. I should have brought them out, you know, before filming this. But anyway, you know, after 1979, Earl Campbell kind of disappeared from the cardboard scene. And I don't believe he was available again until after joining the Saints via trade in 1984. So you have this huge jump. You have one of the least available cards, at least, you know, when I was ripping packs, uh, you know, as a nine-year-old kid uh, back in the day, you know, this card was just hard to find. And even, you know, the early release of Beckett's, it was one of the most desirable, one of the most valuable cards from that that top set. And then, you know, hey, man, in 1980, you can't get Earl Campbell. You can't get him in 81. You don't find him in 82, 83. He's not there. And then finally, in 1984, he shows up again. So, you know, that's it was kind of an enigma. You had this great running back that uh, that wasn't available for whatever reason. And I've never really found out why. I've always been curious, but I never found out why. And then when I started seeing him in modern product, I was really blown away because I was like, I thought this was the only Earl Campbell card and I'm glad it's not. I'm glad I got this one. I don't give a shit if it's a CSG four or not. And the main thing is it's that card, you know, immortalized in a slab and I, I have it to study, you know, and, and learn from and grow from. I'll have this card going forward forever in a slab. This gives me a lot of freedom to do with my raw ones, whatever I want. Uh, probably what I'll do is submit them. I'll, I'll, I'll use this to gauge what those cards may or may not come as, out as, make some notes, and see how we end out. And, and it, I'll just use it as a learning experience, and it'll grow from there. So we start, we're starting with a four. Who knows? Sky's the limit. We'll see you next time.